probably be, uh, if not the, but maybe one of the uh, longest historic actual decentralized names that anyone sort of, sort of owns. And I'm, I'm actually pretty, pretty proud of it. Thanks for tuning into Stacker Chats. Stacks is a Bitcoin layer for smart contracts. I'm Gina Abrams, and I'm joined by Muni Bali, Stacks founder, with your regular updates. So we dove a little bit into .BTC names in our last episode. And what really makes BNS, the Bitcoin name system, different and unique within this world? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, domain names... Um... And by that, I mean decentralized domain names have a very, very rich history. Uh, and especially with Bitcoin going all the way back to Satoshi Nakamoto. And that's, I think, something fascinating, right? Like uh, decentralized domains, they emerge as the first non-financial use case of the Bitcoin blockchain or blockchains in general, because back then it was only the, the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, people should look up Namecoin. Uh, Namecoin was the first fork of Bitcoin. Uh, this happened roughly 2011 or so. And the idea was to modify uh, some of the opcodes in, in Bitcoin to introduce new things where people can uh, register uh, decentralized domains. Uh, and we know that Satoshi uh, has definitely contributed ideas to Namecoin. Some people even believe or claim that Satoshi even contributed code. I don't, I don't think there's any kind of like uh, evidence for that, but, but, but there are theories around, but we know that Satoshi contributed ideas. Uh, Satoshi, uh, they were supportive of these use cases of blockchains. And, and, and in fact, uh, there are some very old uh, Bitcoin talk posts that talk about how there was this idea of having these other layers or chains that can all share the security and the hash power of Bitcoin. Right? So merge mining uh, uh, basically was born out of that. So name, Namecoin in, 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 in one way was sort of like a Bitcoin layer, right? It was trying to share security through merge mining with Bitcoin. And actually support from the, the Bitcoin community at that point, uh, including Satoshi. Right. So uh, the community back then wasn't like, hey, why are you starting another coin? Like, why are you having this new use case? They were actually pretty supportive of developers coming in and building a decentralized system that can actually, uh, you know, give power to the people and, and, and experiment and see where this thing goes. So it has a very, very rich history. I personally got involved uh, with, uh, uh, with, with Namecoin back in 2013. So roughly like a year and a half after Satoshi sort of um, left all projects, including, uh, you know, whatever role they may or may not have in Namecoin. And, and it was a, such a small project at that time. Like you, you think the crypto industry is small right now, like imagine 2013 and what it would look like. A handful of people, uh, there were actually some critical bugs that were being discovered in Namecoin. And um, it, was, it was, the project was like getting rebooted and some developers were still working on it. It was it was like pretty exciting times as well. And um, so it was me, uh, Ryan Che, and we were sort of like, you know, hacking away on trying trying to experiment with what can be done. And, and interestingly, um, we sort of like used the name coin functionality to build uh, like what would I would call like a early version of uh, BNS, right? And you can, I think one way to think about it is you can count it from that. There is history uh, still preserved on the Namecoin blockchain. I don't know how healthy the Namecoin ecosystem is, but at some point, you know, it, it lost all value and a lot of people left and so on. But I do think there's still the blockchain that's around and you can look up the history uh, of names being registered uh, in the blockchain at that time where we came up with this format for, uh, for zone files and whatnot. But um, I personally, uh, Think of the history of BNS, the Bitcoin name system, starting from 2015. So 2015 is basically when we decided that for several reasons, the merge mining thing wasn't working with Namecoin. Like there were so many different issues. Uh, primarily one miner had, you know, way more than 51% of the hash power. 
and these are documented, right? People people can look it up. Actually, my 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 PhD thesis that I was published in 2017 has like a chapter on it, so you can you can go and kind of like read the details, and we can we can uh, link it there. Uh, but basically, uh, we decided to try and build Namecoin like functionality uh, on top of Bitcoin L1 directly. Right? And and the the key challenge was can you do it without actually modifying Bitcoin? which was the reason why the Namecoin folks like sort of forked away in the beginning, because they were trying to change certain parts of the code that would be a consensus breaking change. And that would never happen on Bitcoin. So our challenge was, can you build a Namecoin like system without actually having a consensus breaking change at the Bitcoin level, because that's never gonna happen. And that's what we figured out in, in 2015, just a, just a small number of developers. Uh, and, and we sort of migrated the state from Namecoin to Bitcoin. Uh, that, I think if, if someone was writing the history of BNS, I would say there is an exact block number in, on Bitcoin in which you know these namespaces on Bitcoin were started. Uh, there was actually a 440 BTC burn that happened, right? Like that's depending on the Bitcoin price, roughly like a million dollars today, right? Like money just burned, right? It's, it was part of the protocol to be, you had to destroy some amount of money to be able to register these things uh, because it's decentralized. You can't be like, hey, pay pay Munib or pay like some company uh, to be able to register these things. So it was like done in the name of decentralization, a lot of Bitcoin burned. And interestingly, um, I think this is probably still up on Reddit somewhere as well. Uh, some people were able to recognize that why are, uh, are people burning money on the Bitcoin chain? Initially, they thought that there's a bug in some Bitcoin whales wallet, and they're they're actually just like you know destroying uh, BTC. And then people figured out that the transactions which are actually destroying BTC right now seem to be written in a very sophisticated manner. So it's not like some bug uh, on some wallet, but it's actually someone who really knows what they're doing. And this seems to be some new protocol that they're trying to. So people were actually able to figure it out before the actual announcement happened the, the next morning um, that, that something is happening and it's actually a new protocol that is being launched uh, uh, overnight. And it was, again, exciting times. Uh, so you can, people can actually do this analysis, right? You can pull the data, you can pull those Reddit posts. There was some um, coverage in, in media as well. I think uh, the next morning we had a conference where we announced that, you know, for various reasons we have implemented the system on Bitcoin. And that's what we will be using. Yeah, domain names are important and here's the reason. And uh, I think like there was a lot of excitement about it. It was it was sort of like the same culture that I think that we're seeing with Stacks layer right now, where our message is that, you know, we want to build on Bitcoin. Like there is excitement around building on Bitcoin. And that was that was a similar feeling back then that someone is stopping to use a, a different chain and is now coming uh, back to Bitcoin and saying that hey, this thing can be done on top of Bitcoin and that's more, more valuable when it's on Bitcoin. Similar to ordinals, right? Like when, when NFTs are sort of like being done on Bitcoin L1, uh, people are like, these things are more valuable once they're done on, on the Bitcoin L1. So that was, that was sort of like the feeling. And then that system remained there uh, for almost five years. And, and I think that history is also important to understand. So 2015, I think we'll pull up the exact month. My guess, if my memory serves me well, is probably October or September is that timeline. And there was some, uh, I remember at least like a Coin Telegraph article where uh, for some reason they made a cartoon of me in a suit. Like I never, I never wear suits. Apparently I'm wearing a tie and a suit and I'm announcing I'm holding the Bitcoin symbol and Namecoin is like crying in the background. And I think it's actually now inscribed as a NFT on the Bitcoin uh, chain, that image, I, I've seen it. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to find it, link it in the, in the post as well. But that was, that was sort of like the feeling. And uh, the time in between, uh, so basically 2016 is the main year where that thing scaled out, out a lot. I think there are some graphs that basically show that more than probably 55 or 60% of the traffic on Bitcoin that was using op returns was actually the BNS protocol. And there were, there were so many transactions being sent that just like similar to ordinals, people are concerned about block space and, and so on. 
uh, there were core developers sort of yelling at us. Like they were, they were, they were not happy with this use case. They were like, look, we are trying hard to scale the financial use case of Bitcoin. And you guys have built this domain system, which is fine and great, but it's actually a problem, right? Like it's, it's actually, uh, they would consider it spam uh, on, on Bitcoin L1. And I think that's that's like one thing, like you can, Bitcoin is free and you can build whatever you want on it. Uh, that was not the main concern why we started looking for alternate solutions. I think the main concern was when the Bitcoin fees started to hike. This is early 2017, uh, the block size wars are happening. Ethereum is relatively new, but Ethereum is actually gaining momentum. A bunch of developers are moving to Ethereum. And this is around the same time that ENS was started. Again, we'll look at the dates, but I think ENS sort of started around that time. So the Bitcoin name system, BNS, actually predates it uh, by at least a couple of years, even if you ignore the prehistory of like how, how things started. Um, so 2015 is, I think, when things started on Bitcoin, and, and you can use that date. Uh, so what happened with, with the fees? People were trying to register L1 domain names. That might be worth like $2, depends on the price of the name and how it was calculated. And they were paying anywhere between $50 to $100 in BTC fees in trying to register it. And as more users were getting interested, by the way, this is still less, this is like tens of thousands of users. This is not hundreds of thousands of users, nowhere close to even, even like millions of users. And people are feeling the pain that, you know, I can't pay 50 or 100 bucks for a domain name. And looking forward, like, how would you ever scale uh, to millions of users? Like, you can't even give people, um, you know, because you would need at least two Bitcoin transactions. The way it works, first, you would sort of like register a hash image, then you would reveal what the hash is. Plus, whenever you want to do any update to your name, change the zone file, you'll still you'll do a third transaction. That's that's three three BTC uh, transactions for you. So 2017 is the year when I would say um, the Stacks project as a separate layer was sort of born. Right? That's when uh, the token offering sort of happened, got some capital, and so 2017 is sort of like the year when Stacks started but it's rooted in the experience that we as developers on Bitcoin L1 had in scaling domain and name system. So I think there's a very, very rich history there. And while Stacks layer was under R&D, uh, you know, there was a new uh, programming language, Clarity, that was developed for it. There was new source of consensus algorithms like proof of transfer and everything that went on to the mainnet launch for Stacks. During all that time, I don't think people were like focusing on growing BNS because we knew that you know this thing sort of like doesn't scale on L1, but it was it was online, it was live, right? It was getting registrations. So almost for five years between 2015 and 2020, uh, BNS worked on Bitcoin L1, and with the launch of the Stacks layer in early 2021, uh, there was a new contract. So now there's a smart contract instead of the implementation on Bitcoin L1. There is a smart contract that runs on, on the Stacks layer uh, where name registrations are happening. And interestingly, I don't think that BNS, uh, there is any requirement that you have to be, like all namespaces have to be on the layer. And depends on, you know, if you think of this as a L2 or a layer or, or something else, whatever name you want to give it, but uh, it all namespaces don't have to be on the same layer. If there is a namespace that you want on the L1, the stacks contracts can actually read that information and they can they can resolve the names and so on. But you should just keep that in mind that if you want your namespace to actually get to millions of users, even like hundreds of thousands of users, you will likely run into the same type of fee and scalability issues that we did. But from a historic perspective, uh, I think it's a little bit like NFTs, right? Like where when people were discovering that maybe NFT started on Ethereum and, and the early NFTs uh, got a lot of interest from users uh, they're like historic artifacts. And then people discovered counterparty and were like, oh, wow, no, NFTs actually started on Bitcoin L1. And these counterparty NFTs are even much older because the block time and the record in the Bitcoin chain actually gives you like a real uh, timestamp on when something started. So I think in that way, BNS is truly unique. I don't think you can ever replicate the conditions uh, under which it started, like all the way in the prehistory of, of, of Namecoin. I actually still own a name, uh, munib.id, and I think I should probably write a blog post about it at some point, 
that was registered in 2013 on Namecoin. It migrated to Bitcoin L1 in 2015, and there's a clear history of ownership, and I still own it today, right? So there's a clear history of ownership uh, on the Bitcoin L1 chain, at least till 2015, but in the prehistory era, even on the, on the Namecoin chain. And I think that might actually be, uh, if not the, but maybe one of the uh, longest historic actual decentralized names that anyone sort of, sort of owns. And I'm, I'm actually pretty, pretty proud of it. Well, thank you so much, Maneeb, uh, for this deep dive on BNS. I think that there's a lot more that we can uncover in terms of resources. Um, so we'll share definitely more links in the chat and we'll come back with more updates soon. Thanks y'all for tuning in. Please make sure that you like this video, comment and subscribe for more. We'll see you soon. All right, thanks a lot.